Hello everyone, and welcome back to Soccer Unboxing. So I'm kind of excited for this video today because I recently, you know, picked up some merch off of Bai and also like a My Figure Collection user of a character who's probably going to be in the title of this video, but I didn't want to unbox that right away and show them off like on camera on like what I usually do like in figure hauls and such. Um, I want to actually unbox it on camera for you all to see. Um, just to show you guys my reaction because I'm obviously very excited to finally get these out of the package. And yeah, so without further ado, let us get started with, of course, I'll introduce my latest hyperfixation and where they are from. So I've been getting into a certain series that I've mentioned in the past couple of videos, and that is of course the Fate series. I've been watching a whole bunch of anime adaptations, so I'll pop up the ones I've watched on screen. And of course I've been playing a lot of FGO, which has consumed like some of my free time and sanity. Um, but I've honestly been enjoying the series a lot more than I thought it would I would be, but um, I've also kind of been watching like the anime dub just so, you know, when I'm doing stuff on the side, I can at least, you know, not have to look at subtitles. I apologize for those people who just like get subbed, but I've just, you know, had to do that just so I can do some other stuff on the side. Um, but the dubs I've been enjoying. Um, I don't think they're too bad overall, so, you know, maybe that's a hot take, but sometimes, you know, I just don't mind dubbed anime, to be honest. So yes, I am kind of deep in the Fate rabbit hole, and it does make me, like, a lot more excited for more Fate anime adaptations from, you know, manga or visual novels or light novels and such to be adapted into an anime, and it Definitely makes me more hype for Fate figures because my god, some of those Fate figures look fantastic, especially because some of them are made by Alter and they're definitely top tier, so I know they'll deliver in, you know, translating those characters from like 2D to 3D. So, yes, now I'll be going into pretty much, you know, what this video is dedicated to. This is for one specific character from FGO who is my recent hyperfixation and probably my FGO husbando, and that would be Oberon. So what can I say about this character? So first things first, we're gonna get the elephant out of the room. I just think he's very handsome. And I just really like his ascensions for different reasons. And, you know, I'll go into those a little bit later. And, you know, just I'm intrigued by his character and his story in FGO. Specifically, of course, the Lost Belt that he appears in. And, yeah, so, you know, I haven't reached that point in the game. But, you know, I'm hoping to, you know, read through it just to kind of, you know, see how he interacts with the other characters and such. Um, I, you know, obviously because I kind of know about this character by, you know, watching videos about him, you know, I was kind of spoiled, but I haven't actually read any of Lost Belt 6, if that makes sense. So, yeah, there's that. So I guess I'll also be going to some of his ascensions. So I'll start with the first one, which has a sort of butterfly motif to it. And it's not my favorite of the bunch, but I do kind of like the sort of Shakespeare vibe, the sort of like play vibe it's going for. Um, I feel like this is like a costume design that you would see if someone were to portray him in like an adaptation of A Midsummer Night's Dream in a way. So yes, it's not my favorite design, but I do kind of like the sort of vibe and direction it kind of goes for. And then the second ascension has a sort of moth motif to it. And I just really love the wintry and cozy vibes it gives off and just like the fluffiness of the outfits. So yeah, I really love second ascension so yes and then third ascension um i'll say right now it's a little bit spoilery because of how different it is compared to the other two so um be forewarned that you know as i go through this video and show off the merch there is some art of third ascension um so yeah just because again it gives off a different vibe and you know it's for story reasons why he kind of looks like this and okay so yeah i'll of course you know put a timestamp for when to skip if you don't want to see how his third ascension looks but yeah, here it is up on screen and I, it's edgy, it's different, it's darker than the other two for reasons and you know, some people might not like it, but I am of course here for the edge. I love the, you know, the dragonfly design. I like just the fluffy sort of like, it's not really a scarf, I'm not too sure what it is, like around his neck and just the, you know, the clawed hands and feet, I think, I don't know. It's edgy, it's sharp, I just like it. And then his cape, which is kind of hard to see in probably the picture I'm showing, but the back of it has like a whole bunch of different insect wings on it, which I think looks super cool. So yes, 
I really love their ascension. It might be my favorite. So yes, all of these different designs I really like for different reasons and yeah, they're probably my my favorite of, you know, different like fate art I've seen on just because of how like different they are from each other because sometimes with fate art they just kind of add something small to the character to make it different from first to se to second to third ascension with Oberon it feels like they're all you know completely different all completely different outfits which I do quite like um I won't be going into summer Oberon a little bit just because unfortunately he's not in the North American version of FGO for those who don't know um, in the FGO community, there was FGO JP, and then there's FGO NA, or North America, and basically there's like a two-year gap between the two, which really sucks <laughs> to wait for like certain servants to be in FGO NA. I'm pretty sure it's just involving like translations and just, you know, all that and getting it over to the NA server. But yeah, there is somewhere Oberon, who I think, you know, they look super nice. Um, it's just a costume for Oberon, it's not a completely new, like, servant class or anything. Um, but I am excited for when he finally gets put into, um, FGONA. It's probably not gonna be until 2025. Um, but I eagerly await it so I can finally get his costumes in my game. And yeah, speaking of my FGONA, um, he's my most, like, leveled up servant. I am throwing all my grails at him and, you know, I'm excited again to finally get him to 3rd ascension. So yes, um, as you can tell, this character has just consumed, you know, my brain. I'm getting Oberon brain rot. So bad. And of course, what do you do when you have a new hyperfixation, a new husbando to simp for? You essentially scour the internet for merch of them, so... Yeah, I have this box from Bai right here that's pretty heavy because I do have some other FGO related stuff in here. And, you know, I scoured the internet for Oberon merch, so of course I thought I would, you know, unbox this on camera. So I'm excited to show you guys what is in this. And I really want to open it so bad because um, I'm excited to, you know, have this Oberon merch to make kind of an Oberon shrine. So yes, without further ado, let us get into what is in this Bai package. So also, I apologize before I get into that buy package, um, I did kind of want to show off some merch that I picked up from an MFC user who was selling Oberon related merch. Um, so I'll show the page up on screen. So thankfully they allowed you to buy some of these items separately um, because just that, you know, that price for all of them was expensive and I only wanted to select a few items from there. So I'll show up the first couple of that I got from that user. So the first couple I have here are actually clear files that came in a set. Obviously, I wanted the one with Oberon on it, but these are very nice overall, and I believe these are based off of, you know, craft essences in FGO. So we have this first one right here with Merlin and Oberon, looking fine as hell. I also love Merlin. I really want to pull him in game. He is also very pretty. Uh, the second one, which is a green one, um, I'm not sure about some of the other characters on there. Oh, actually, I do see, um, I believe Voyager is on there. He's absolutely adorable. And Enkidu. Enkidu is also fine as hell. I really want to pull them in game. Again, long-haired characters I simp for. And then the last clear file has Waver, I believe, on there and another character. Um, I can't remember who that is because of just the outfit, but... Waver, also fine as hell with long hair. <laughs> FGO has some very nice long haired boys in there as well. So yeah, another reason why I want to play that game is to collect some long haired boys. But, but yes, these clear files are very nice overall. And it's kind of nice to have some of those like craft essences on merch because they can be kind of like low quality in game. But it's nice to have them kind of like upscaled and much nice quality on these clear files. So the next item I have right here is actually an Oberon acrylic standee and I really love the art style for him in this one. This is of course the second ascension of him and oh, he just looks so good in this. And I'm not too sure who the artist is who made this acrylic standee. I am using um, his um, Oberon's My Figure Collection page to see the goods and I haven't seen like this one up on there. There's no page for it so I'm not too sure who... Um, drew him, you know, in this sort of art style. But, you know, if I manage to find it, I'll probably pop it up on screen. But yes, um, it's quite big overall. And, you know, I still have him in the packaging because I don't have room for these. But yes, 
nice little acrylic standee to add to my Oberon collection. So the last two I picked from that My Figure Collection user are two art book doujinshis. So yes, fan books with Oberon art in it. And my god, he looks so good in both of these. So uh, yeah, the one in the front and the one in the back, they're by different artists. So I'll go over the one in the front first. And so the first one we have right here is the Stage uh, Oberon art book. This is made by the artist Shin Shichimi, I believe. I'm looking at the My Figure Collection page. And White Egg is the circle. So yes, just a lot of gorgeous like Oberon art in this one. I really love the way that they draw him in this. And it has, of course, his different ascensions as well as um, a little bit of Castoria in there as well. But yeah. But yeah, it's a very short art book overall, but I just really love the illustrations that they put into this one. And the next one we have right here is a much bigger Oberon fan book, which is the Oberon Vortigern Fake Grand Order illustration fan book. So, by the way, Oberon Vortigern kind of more refers to, um, you know, Oberon himself, but I feel like it mostly associates it with the Third Ascension. Um, but this book has such, like, nice quality to it. This is by... Uh, the illustrator Urakita and Ura Booth is the circle, so I believe that's their Pix of Booth page, but my god, again, there's a lot of gorgeous like Oberon artwork in it. And I do kind of like how it kind of goes in order a little bit from his first ascension at the beginning to his third ascension. And there's just yeah, such lovely artwork in this. Again, I just really like the way this artist draws him. Um, my favorite page of the bunch has to be the one where they kind of like swap like designs a little bit. Like the first ascension has the third um, ascension's color scheme and then the second ascension has the first ascension sort of design and then the third has the second uh, ascension's design. But uh, yeah, he, he just looks so good in all of these artworks. I really do like it overall. So yes, overall two very gorgeous art books by these two different illustrators and I'm very happy to have these in my collection. So yes, now we're moving on to the Bai merch, which I'm going to start from like the top down and I don't know exactly what's in what. Again, I'm doing this on camera so you guys can see my reactions, but yeah, I have a whole bunch of different Bai merch here. Um, there is one that was at the top, but I am saving that one for last. Um, but before I get into these, there are some other like non-Oberon related um, pieces of merch that I picked up, so I'll quickly show those off right now. So yeah, the first couple of items in here that are like just mostly FGO related are the Fate Grand Order material books, I believe they're called. But yes, I got the first five of these and I believe I got them for under 20 USD. Um, and I tried to get these as a set off of Bai. Um, as I believe they get like, you know, to the more recent ones um, in this series of books, I think they get more expensive, like if you want to get them secondhand or they're just basically retail price, or they're just hard to come by. So yes, I luckily managed to snag a set of these off of Bai, and they're honestly a lot smaller than I thought they would be, and they're also pretty heavy as a set, so I'm gonna put these down and take one of them out right now. So yeah, here's one of them out of the packaging, which is, yeah, they're in this kind of like blue um, metallic sort of sleeve protector. Uh, some of them are a little bit dinked up. I mean, they are secondhand, um, but they're not like super duper damaged. I don't think so. You do kind of just slide them a little bit out of the sleeve and you kind of get this nice like art book that basically kind of collects like different parts of FGO. It has character designs and concepts and such, which I think is, you know, good for like a reference if you need it. Um, especially, you know, as an artist, um, I feel like it's very nice to pick these up just for having references. But yeah, unfortunately, I think these are just all in Japanese. I don't think they've released these in English, I believe. But I mean, I don't mind too much. I just really collect these just to see the art of the characters in a way. Um, it also shows their ascensions, which I think is also very nice. So yeah, I managed to get these for, you know, pretty good price for, you know, the first five of these. So um, in my b-roll, I'll probably just show off the first one I picked up here. But yeah, I'm kind of interested in looking towards the other ones uh, to see which characters are in which. And I would definitely like to pick some of these off in the future. Um, I know Mandarake has a whole bunch of them, but of course it's best to get them from the same store so you don't have to pay shipping like per store. That's just how Mandarake works. Um, so I'm hoping to pick like six through, I believe there's 13 out. So I am missing 
um, eight of them. So I'm, you know, kind of wanted to pick those up in the future, but yes. Overall, from, you know, what I kind of skimmed through right now, um, these are very nice overall and they're nice, you know, good reference books if you want to draw some of these characters. I also should mention with those FGO materials books, by the way, I forgot to mention, these are up on Ami Ami, or I believe Ami Ami does sell these. Um, unfortunately, the latest one, they closed and it recently released in August of 2023. And these roughly individually go for around 11 USD, which I think is not too bad considering it's a pretty like chunky art book. I mean, I've seen art books that are, you know, a lot more like stupidly priced, I think. But I feel like that's a pretty good price for what you can get them. And considering the fact that aftermarket wise with these, I've seen on Mandarake, they sell for like less than this. I feel like they're pretty good pickups overall. So yes, I just kind of want to give a heads up to, you know, people who are wondering about like the prices originally for these art books and, you know, where you can also pick them up. So now we're moving on to the Oberon merch and I'm gonna, you know, picking these at random. I'm not sure what exactly is in what. So I got this one right here. So I'm excited to show, you know, what's in it. It does feel pretty sturdy and might be some clear files that I picked up of him. So I'll take a look at that right now. So we're moving to the first three, which I was right. They are clear files I picked up and these are mini clear files. Um, so this is from a recent um, FGO sort of event, I believe, where the characters are dressed in kimono, yukata, I'm not too sure exactly. Um, but this is a clear file set. So these are by the same artist who is um, Kaoru is the name of the illustrator who drew these. So the first one we have right here is of Sherlock Holmes. Looks very handsome in that outfit. The second one right here we have is of Voyager, who I also really want in my game. I just think he has a super cute character design overall. And the last one, of course, looking fine as hell in this outfit, is Oberon. I really like how they kind of translated the fluffy moth outfit into this, you know, sort of design for his outfit. Um, but yeah, he just looks super good in this one. Um, so yeah, these are very cute like little clear files overall. Um, I didn't think they'd be this small, but um, I'm glad I got these as a set. I do like the art styles overall. I did get worried seeing them on Bai. I thought it was just of um, Sherlock um, is the only clear file you'd get, but then, you know, Google Translate, it said it comes as a set. So yes, um, very nice like tiny clear files overall. So yes, now I have all of these ones that are wrapped together in the same bubble wrap. Um, and I'm not sure which one I'm going to go for first. I mean, I might go for the thinner one first because I know the thicker ones are, um, I think some art books and such. Um, so yes, I'm going to start with some of the thinner ones. So I'll quickly get into this one right here. But yeah, so the first one we have right here is, you know, I'm not too sure it might be some like art prints and such, but you know, I have to cut this open to take a look. So I'll do that right now with a handy little cutter. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at the first ones that are in here, and okay, um, we got some cute little Oberon cards. Um, I do have, yeah, two Oberon related prints. We have First Ascension and um, Vortigern, who I might call the Third Ascension, uh, because that's what he kind of goes by. Um, but yeah, the artwork in this is so, so nice. Um, this is by the same person, uh, Shichimi, who did these Oberon um, stage doujin. And yeah, so, god, these art prints are so good. Like, I like how kind of soft the first ascension looks, and then you got third ascension, edgy, but he's hot as hell in that one, so I love it. Um, and also, on the back of this one, there is like some extra little goodies, so I'll take these out right now to take a look at what they are. Okay, so I think this is supposed to be the art book that these items came with, which is a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. Um, I'll get into that before um, I go into like this little tiny item right here, which is supposed to be like a clear card, I believe they're called. But you have Oberon in his like tiny form just being held by, you know, this person and he's just not having it. And I think that is so so cute overall so yeah interesting little item right here i don't tend to get these like, kind of clear cards but i think they're pretty neat overall and then i believe this is supposed to be the doujin that i ordered with this this art doujin which is called 3 p.m go go show shoku um again this is by that same artist and <laughs> i like i saw it and i had to pick it up um note i feel like it's kind of just hard to find like 
art books on Baiyi and such, like like doujin artists. Um, so when I came across this, I had to pick it up just so I can have it. <laughs> it's just so precious. Like, look at the freaking, look how cute, look how cute they are as like little tiny chibi dumplings. <laughs> oh my god, he looks so cute in this like chibi style. Um, so yeah, I'm looking through it, and it looks like it's just like Oberon with a whole bunch of different foods, some sweets and such. Looking absolutely adorable in this sort of chibi form that they drew him in, and I just love the way they drew, like, the sweets and the food overall. But yeah, it's super duper short, super duper small, um, a lot tinier than I thought it was gonna be, but again, the artwork I feel like makes up for, for how cute they drew Oberon. So yes, yeah, very nice to have this extra little, like, mini doujin in my collection. Okay, next we have this one, which is a little bit more thicker. I can feel the packaging's a little more thicker, so I'm interested to see what this is. Okay, um, looking at it, might be another art book. It's looking pretty thick, so I can probably just pull it out the side. Okay, maybe not. There is tape. There is tape on the inside of this. They taped it to the cardboard, so I'm gonna have to- I'll do this off camera, but you know, I have to take that tape off because it's a little bit annoying. Oh my god, it's a <laughs> No, it's a light novel. Oh shit. So now I have this one right here. Um, I actually looked at it um, when I was unpacking it and I realized that this is a novel. Um, so I kind of messed up on this one. I should have translated the description into English. Um, so I don't know what the hell they're saying in this. Um, but you know, I was like, oh, the cover looks nice. I'll pick it up. Not realizing that it's a novel, so yeah, before you buy anything of a buy, especially if it's like a book like this and they don't show any of the pages, I recommend translating the description. Hopefully they say what it is exactly. So yeah, uh, I kind of messed up on this one. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I'm not going to be able to read this. This is just now a collector's item. Um, I'm not too sure who wrote this, by the way. I don't see it right away on um, my figure collection. Um, I'll see if I can find it and then I can put it up on screen, but yeah. But yeah, so this one is kind of a dud, and it's kind of my fault again. Um, when it comes to collecting items for characters, I tend to lean more towards art books. I don't mind if it's manga, but again, I can't read it specifically. I mean, I don't mind the art, but I feel like I took an L on this one because I just didn't read the description, but, you know, overall, I think the cover and, like, the quality of it feels nice overall. Next up, we have this one, which I feel like is is wrapped in bubble wrap. It feels pretty soft and it's nice. It's small as well. So hopefully it's not a dud like the other one was. I know what this is and I'm quite excited. And this is a, well, that is a big item. That's a lot bigger than I thought it was. So um, I'll quickly free it from the packaging. Okay. I pulled it out of the packaging. It's a lot bigger than I thought it was, which is nice. And um, yeah, another Oberon acrylic standee, but this is the one where he's in that, you know, kimono or yukata. I apologize if I get the, you know, what it, outfit is specifically wrong. Oh, but the artwork is so good. I, again, I love this design overall. So, um, again, if you wanted to, I believe also, you know, you can get the other two Sherlock Holmes or Voyager, but of course, um, this is Oberon. I just want Oberon. So, yeah. Um, thankfully, you know, the people on Baie feel like weren't charging too much for this. Um, this was about like 16 USD. So yes, yeah, so when I saw this, like, you know, looking at goods for Oberon on MFC, um, this wasn't out yet at the time, but I kept an eye on it. And, you know, I wanted to get this as soon as people were selling it secondhand on Baie. And I, yeah, I love his design in this, like, outfit overall. It looks so very nice and cheerful and, you know, um, again, I'll keep this in the packaging for the time being because I don't have room for these, but I'll show it in some b-roll. Um, but yeah, it's super nice. I'm glad I got this standee to add to my, you know, growing collection for Oberon. Next up, we have this one, which is pretty thick and like, it's like one of the heaviest of the last two ones that I have. Um, so I'm interested to see which one it is. I kind of know what the last two items are, but I don't know which is in which, so I'll look at this one right here. Okay, um, immediately I pull this out and I kind of know what it is, and this thing is, oh my god, that's that so much bigger than I thought it was going to be. Um, <laughs> this is what happens, because sometimes they don't like list the size of the item, so I'm like, and um, I kind of knew that this was a manga. Um, again, this is one that I bought before looking into what it is, and um, 
yeah, but it's a lot bigger than I thought it was, so I'm gonna open this out of this plastic and, you know, show you guys on screen. Okay, so right here is a giant... I think it's a manga. Oh my god. <laughs> It's a- this is a- this is basically a manga if it was like giant sized like good grief This is- what the heck? I'm like I thought it was gonna be smaller This is an item I thought was gonna be smaller, but it's a lot larger than I thought it was I didn't know it was a you know a manga But you know I picked it up anyway because I liked the cover of this one again Oberon on the cover and the art style for this one looks fantastic overall um, I'm not too sure if there's anything else specific. Okay, there is a couple of like colored pages at the very beginning of it, which I think is nice. Oh my god, he's so handsome. <laughs> he's so- um, there's this one artwork at the beginning. It's, he's got like a totally different like outfit design, which I think is pretty neat. Um, and yeah, so I don't know what this is about, but the art style looks good. And yeah, I, again, I don't really feel like picking up like any like Oberon related like doujin like this. Um, just because, again, I prefer, like, art books themselves, because I can't, again, can't read Japanese, so I won't understand what's being said unless I translate it. Um, again, this is just kind of a collector's items. I mean, it's good for, you know, I feel like also the manga is, like, kind of good for, like, reference and such. Um, with, you know, character at different angles, because, you know, um, I need that sometimes, but yeah. So yes, I feel like this is an interesting pickup, just because it's basically, like, an oversized manga, but yeah, I really like the art style and the way they drew the characters and you know i like how they has a couple of color pages at the beginning so yes you know very interesting pickup overall so now we have this last one right here which again is kind of thick and i do know what is in this i believe and you know i'm kind of glad i saved this one for last so I'll quickly unbox it right now okay i feel like i saved the best for last because i pulled this out and it just looks so good it looks so so good so here we go. This is the last book we have right here, and I definitely know this is an art book. So this specifically is the Umino Chica um, Oberon art book. Uh, oh my god, I'm gonna butcher this. Tasodare no Okoku. Um, so this is an Oberon art book. All dedicated to him, by the way. And this is actually illustrated by the illustrator for Oberon in FGO, who is Umi no Chika, who is best known for the manga March Comes in Like a Lion and I'm sure some other um, manga they've created or illustrated for. Um, but they are responsible for the character design of Oberon. And when I saw that they made an Oberon art book, I'm like, I have to pick this up. And so far I'm very impressed. It has this gorgeous, gorgeous gold foil cover with him on the front and it looks so nice. Um, so basically what this is, is just a concept, I believe, book dedicated to, you know, showing how they designed Oberon and just the phases of his design and, you know, the final product. And, you know, I, of course, you know, I did see a little bit of this book before from, like, um, a YouTube short. But of course, I wanted to pick this up for myself because, again, I like having these in person. And oh, I feel like this is kind of also, you know, another good reference book. Um, for drawing the character. But yeah, it's all like in, you know, sketched out in like pencil and such. And my god, I am, you know, quite happy to have this. Um, and there's also some like small illustrations of some of the um, other characters in this. Oh my god, but it's nice and big too. I do like it when art books are like pretty big like this. Um, additionally, I forgot to mention it came with this um, extra little um Oberon Vortiger and uh I think it's a bookmark or it just might be like a little art card and then you have a little little version of him on the back and of course this is illustrated by Umi no Chika. So yes I think this is absolutely gorgeous just to see you know how he looked at like from one point to another and yeah just the overall quality is fantastic and yeah I like kind of like the sketchy messy pencil um drawings of him and it just looks so good. So, you know, I kind of want to look at this in my free time. I kind of just skimmed through it briefly, but I think it looks fantastic. It's kind of a good reference. So yes, um, there was also like a version of this, like that someone I saw was selling on Baii with like a sketchbook, quote unquote, also made by um, Umi no Chika. Unfortunately, that goes for like much more expensive. They were selling for like 100 USD. 
um, and that was before I saw that, so I got this one for like, it is quite expensive, I actually picked this up for like 70, um, because it is kind of like a, you know, I feel like a rarer item, and that's why it's the price it was. Um, but with that sketchbook, it then bumps the price up, and thank god, because, um, Umino Chica on their Twitter actually posted, like, pretty much, like, all the pages from that sketchbook that they printed physically into, you know, they posted it on Twitter, so I saved those pictures, um, to use as, like, reference. But yes, um, this came in pretty great condition overall, and the quality looks absolutely fantastic, so yes. Um, definitely a very great Oberon, you know, item to pick up, especially because it is made by his original illustrator. So the last item, of course, I want to show off is a figure that I picked up of him, and of course I had to pick this up for the collection, so I'll show him off right now. And that is, of course, the Oberon Nendroid that I picked up of Abai. So I kind of have some regrets for not pre-ordering him right away, and the reason why I didn't is because his accessories were really lacking. And now as a big Oberon fan, it's such a shame. They, I feel like they could have gone like, you know, some different ways. They could have made accessories for him, like some of the other fake characters. But I'll get into that like, a little bit later. So, um, originally on Ami Ami, he was 6,800 yen, which is $45.52 USD. He's not on there anymore. But my god, searching for this like aftermarket wise, it was a little bit crazy. And of course, I was impatient. So. I pretty much picked up like one of the cheapest ones I could find, so I did end up getting this for like 60 USD, which is kind of stupid. Like, oh, you could have waited, but I love this man and I'm impatient and I want him on my collection now. So yeah, I picked the cheapest one and I'll pop up some pictures up on buy of him and people are selling him for like 50 plus USD. You know, and sometimes like, oh, 75. Some people are bundling him with like some other like Oberon related items, but it's just, stupidly expensive and needless to say I was pissed when I saw that I'm like I should have just ordered him when I could um so yeah unfortunately I had to get him off of Bai but now he's in my collection he's here he looks adorable so I'm gonna unbox him right now and show him off so here he is um and he's <laughs> so cute like as an android oh my god okay so yeah i'm gonna have to take him out so of course this is um i forgot to mention second ascension Oberon, um which i do quite like i feel like it might have been a little bit tricky to do first ascension especially with his wings so i think i'm quite fine with them still for a second ascension so let me free him from this blister packaging oh my god free him <laughs> he's so he's so cute I look like a goosebumps. Oh, he's so cute. Um, okay. I will admit, I'm looking at him right now. I mean, with my horrible lighting from where I'm sitting. So far, it doesn't look too bad. Um, this is made by Orange Rouge, by the way, who I think make, you know, overall, like, kind of the best Nendroids in terms of quality and stuff. Um, and I think they tend to lean more towards male characters, if I'm not mistaken, in terms of making Nendroids for them. So far, he doesn't look too bad. Um, there is kind of like a little gap between his like crown a little bit, which is a little bit unfortunate. Um, yeah, it's like connected on one side, but not the other. So that's, uh, maybe if I push it in a little bit more, it's fine. But okay, I gotta just get all this, um, plastic off of him. So I have to say, for this Nendroid, it's like the most plastic I've had to take off of a Nendroid. Um, because he does have sort of plastic underneath his, like, outfit to protect, um, from paint transfer because the underneath of his cape is like blue and um if you guys know how i feel about like darker colors touching like lighter colors on a figure um it makes me paranoid about paint transfer so i'm kind of worried about that in the future with him but of course i wanted to play him with the cape because i love it so much um oh god i hope this doesn't like scrape anything off so yes, here is my tiny Mothman all assembled, and I think he looks super cute as an android. So I'm probably just going to do some b-roll over this part while I just talk about him and my overall thoughts on the Nendroid. Translating to Nendroid, I think he looks super cute overall. Um, I really like the sculpt and the way they colored in some of his um, parts. And I do of course like how they kind of kept the original illustration for his cape. 
in terms of like the design of it and I do like how it has some nice shading to it and it also has some sculpted in lines representing the veins of the moth wing. So I also like how they sculpted and colored the fluffy part of his cape. I do think they did a pretty good job with that. It does give off the impression that it is supposed to be kind of fluffy material. And then the crown, in terms of the gold, it's pretty nice overall. There isn't any paint bleeding thankfully onto his head and the transition from the gray to the pink on his hair looks great. And while he really does like lack a lot of accessories, I do like the facial expressions he comes with. Um, I do like the winking face, I think that's very cute. And then the sleeping one, which might be, you know, kind of reference to this one over on artwork that I see go around a lot. Um, so there's that, I think that's very cute, and especially because they pretty much chibi-fied him as an android, I feel like it fits that artwork pretty well. So yeah, there's also a little bit of articulation in the cape. Um, it really only goes up and down, so there really isn't enough. It is just enough for him to stick his arms out, thankfully. And yeah, so unfortunately I do have some issues with mine and some other nitpicks as well that kind of just, you know, was the main reason why I didn't pre-order the ninja in the first place. So of course, uh, the main reason why I just skipped out on buying him was the lack of accessories, which is very disappointing as obviously a big fan of the character. Again, he really only has those face plates, alternate arm parts, and Blanca. I'm glad at least they included her. Um, but I really wish that they would have included some, like, sort of props that he uses hit in his attacks. I'll probably pop the first one up on screen, which is his buster attack where he throws, like, this javelin at the enemy. I think that would have been nice to include. As well as maybe an effect part where there's, like, these, like, stream of butterflies that he sends out to the enemy. I think that would have been very cool as well. Um, because I've seen them do this with, like, other Fate Ninja Roys where they have, you know, some, like, effect parts to them, and I really wish that Oberon had some, especially because I feel like some of them wouldn't be too bad to translate into a Nentroid. So if he had items like that, I feel like he would be, like, definitely, you know, much more worth buying. And, yes, Big Rape is definitely a lack of accessories. The other one, at least on my copy of this Nentroid, which is very, very unfortunate, I'm a little bit upset about it, um, the first one is that on his hair, on, um, you know, looking at him, like, on the left side, but it's his right side of his head, it's a little bit rough in, like, one area, like, they didn't just smooth it down before painting over it, which is a, kind of a shame, and I don't want to kind of, like, try and smooth this down with my nail or scratch it off, because I'm worried I'm going to pick up the paint, and especially because it's on that sort of transition from the gray to the pink tips of his hair, so that's pretty unfortunate that that happened. Um, the other thing that I noticed, unfortunately, was that there was, like, this black speck on the back of his cape, which, like, how the hell do you miss that? Um, that obviously, you know, quite bothers me. Um, I kind of want to try and, like, rub that off in some way, but I'm scared I'm gonna, like, accidentally rub maybe, you know, some of the gray or some of his, like, outfit design off, and that's gonna be unfortunate. So yeah, that's definitely, I feel like that's definitely not supposed to be on there, but it's, you know, they missed that, which is unfortunate. Um, I do have a big pet peeve of, like, darker colors on, you know, getting paint transferred onto lighter colors. Also, if you, like, if you really want to be nitpicky, I feel like on my copy, the crown, at least on, again, like, my right, his left, um, it doesn't quite go in all the way. It's a tiny gap, but, you know... You can definitely tell it from above, but on the side, it's, you know, it's kind of hard to tell, but there's also that. Um, I do worry about paint transfer in the future from, um, you know, because I wanted to swing with the cape, because I love it. And, um, you know, I worry about that kind of rubbing off onto his white outfit. And, yeah. Um, I also forgot to mention in terms of accessories that some people want to see him, of course, again, with the the wings out, um, but I feel like that'd be tricky to do in Nendroid form. The other thing people kind of want to see was like that moth hat that he kind of wears in his extra attack. I think that would have been a cute touch too. Heck, you know, maybe I could like make my own and just put it on top of his head. Um, but yeah, so overall, you know, lack of accessories definitely like downgrades this Nendroid by a lot and just, at least with mine, some like kind of glaring issues which are very unfortunate. Um, God, that, yeah, that, that rough area is just awful. I'm very surprised, to be honest, because I feel like Orange Roos does the overall great job with their Nendroids. Um, unless I just got the short end of the, the stick, unfortunately, or just Nendroids have been kind of going down in quality and, you know, they've been raising the price. 
Um, but yeah, I am still happy to have him in my collection. At a distance, he looks great, but, you know, up close. Oh boy, um, some areas are just unfortunate. Um, but yeah, as my first Oberon figure, you know, I'm happy to have at least, you know, a 3D version of him. Because I want him IRL. <laughs> so yeah, that's of course, you know, even though I had to shell out the, the amount I paid for for him, I just, I wanted him. <laughs> no matter what. Um, so I hope, you know, if you are looking for him, you can find him at a much cheaper price. And hopefully, you get a slightly better quality one than I did. So before I end this video, I do kind of want to talk about some other Oberon related things. So first off, I'm going to be talking about merch and figures. So I actually ended up pre-ordering his Noodle Stopper which is made by Furyu, which I hope looks pretty good um, because I saw the Silver Ash Noodle Stopper, which I was tempted to pre-order before. Unfortunately, I looked at some of my figure collection photos and his face just looks like whack. Um, I understand it's definitely, you know, a cheaper end figure under 30 USD, so you can't expect the quality to be there, but um, I was hoping it would look good because I do like Silver Ash's character design and unfortunately it just ain't it. <laughs> so I'm hoping that Oberon doesn't get butchered too much in the face, but god, just look at this freaking noodle stopper of him. Again, you can actually see the moth wings on this one, which I think is excellent. So I'm very much excited to pick him up. I did end up ordering him off of um, Hobby Genki, I believe. I cannot remember, but unfortunately, like Tokyo Talking Mode, um, they were out of stock on him um, in terms of you know pre-orders. So I went to Hobby Genki, you know, picked him up. He's around 25 USD, but I am excited to have this Oberon figure. I really hope it looks, you know, as good as it can be for a noodle stopper. So yeah, that one is supposed to come out in December, which, you know, hopefully for it being a noodle stopper, it doesn't get delayed. And then there's only like some, you know, good items I want to talk about. Of course, I want to scavenge the internet for some um, Oberon doujinshis. Unfortunately, again, there, yeah, I have to get them off some other websites, and unfortunately, sometimes I have to use, like, Bai or another proxy shipping service to get them. So there is this one Oberon art book. Um, it's called Light of Twilight. Um, this is on Tora no Ana, and I believe you can use, like, a proxy service for them. And I really want it, because there is some Oberon art in there that looks very nice overall. So, you know, I'm interested in picking that up. Maybe if I can find it on Mandarake or, you know... Finding on Toro no Ana and then get it shipped to the US, maybe through Bai, I'm not sure, or I'll have to use another proxy shipping service. In terms of goods, there were some like Oberon goods I saw that I just didn't pick up on Bai, but I saved them to my cart. Um, there's some like acrylic charms of him that I kind of want to get. And of course, next up is this tapestry, which has the same sort of kimono yukata design that he wears, which is surprisingly not getting released until December. I don't know why they didn't put that with the other items. Um, I'm- I like it. It looks pretty large. It's supposed to be like 28 inches long, but I feel like I'm just gonna skip out on it, um, mainly because I have the clear file and the standee and that has like the full like design on there, so I might just skip that tapestry. And also speaking of tapestries, there is this one that is illustrated by, um, Umi no Chika with like Oberon's second ascension artwork where he's with Blanca and I've seen this be like not that expensive so I am thinking of possibly picking that one up in the future if it's still on Bai. But the big two that I saw that I really want but unfortunately I'm not able to pre-order right away are these very adorable Mochi Mochi mascot um, Oberon first ascension and then Oberon Vortigern or third ascension little tiny Zoom Zoom bean plushy things Oh my god, I saw a tweet about this and I'm like, I need to get these. The only issue is the website. I actually emailed them saying, hey, you ship to the US. And unfortunately, they don't. And also the other issue is that to get Oberon like Vortigern, you do have to buy the box set of, you know, Lost Belt 6 characters, um, which I don't want them all. I just want, again, I just want Oberon. Um, so it's very unfortunate that, you know, I won't be able to pick these up right away. Um, it says they're going to be releasing in February of 2024, and I'm hoping that people will sell these on Bai. Um, I have actually, like, looked up, you know, FGO uh, Mochi Mochi mascots on Bai, and, you know, they're relatively inexpensive. Um, I feel like it's going to depend on the character, and with how Oberon is, um, he might be expensive, especially Vortigern, considering you have to buy him with that box set. Um, he might be, like, way more expensive. But I want him anyway, 
I mean, look at Vortigern's smug face. I cannot skip out on this guy. Um, so I'm going to keep an eye out these when they finally go up in like February and just see if I can get them, you know, specifically the two Oberon ones for a pretty decent price. And of course, the big last one that I do want to talk about is, of course, the Oberon Vortigern Ultra Scale. I will not shut up about this figure because this is my newest like holy grail that I want to pick up. And I will be pre-ordering this, like, no matter what. If people are selling the Nendoroid for, like, 50 plus, like, 60, 70, 80 USD, I cannot imagine how much in the aftermarket this scale is going to go up. So I'm not taking any risks. It's probably going to be super expensive. I am, I'm guessing 300 plus USD. Maybe Alter can prove me wrong, but I don't know. But I will be ordering this. But yes. If worse comes to worse, I'll have to dedicate a month to him, which I will greatly do because this is, again, one that'll be like the creme de la creme to my Oberon collection. I cannot wait to see how it turns out painted. So there is one more Oberon related item that I do want to talk about, and that is the fact that he is getting a Harmonia Bloom for his first and second ascensions. And honestly, I don't think the Harmonia Bloom series are too ugly. But I do think he would have suited being a Harmonia Humming figure a lot better. I think in terms of like dolls like this, I think the Harmonia Humming series is just a little bit more appealing to me than the Harmonia Bloom series. So yes, depending on his design, I am thinking about picking him up. It obviously depends on how he turns out as a Harmonia Bloom. But the major factor that just makes me want to skip getting that Harmonia Bloom version of him completely is the price point. Because Harmonia Blooms ain't freaking cheap at all. They're very expensive. So they ranged from the 48k to 49k yen price range um, from what I've seen, which is very expensive. So, you know, I might pop up some of them on screen and their price tags, but yeah, they're pretty expensive. And I completely understand that, you know, fabric definitely adds to the cost and the fact that they have like the hair, that kind of adds something. Um, so I have an example that I'm looking at on screen on the Good Small US website, which is the Harmonia Bloom Seasonal Doll Gabriella, which is $370.99 USD without shipping, by the way. Um, I don't know like what type of box these guys come in or how big their boxes are, um, but these Harmonia Blooms tend to be about 10 inches tall. But yeah, it's freaking pricey. And if you compare that to a Harmonia Humming, so... As an example, I have pretty much like the most expensive Harmonia Humming figure on here, which is the creator's doll Frasier, I believe, designed by Arimo, which was 38k yen, and on the US website it is $274.99 USD. So not really a hundred dollars more expensive than a Harmonia Humming, but it's a big price difference. And Harmonia Hummings are like an inch shorter, but I feel like I, I don't really see the price difference between the two. And, you know, if you have like a favorite anime character, they tend to be towards a Harmonia humming. So I don't know why Oberon is a Harmonia Bloom instead. So the last thing I forgot to mention is that in the Harmonia humming series, there are a whole bunch of different anime characters. And yeah, they're like 33k yen, which is like 230 USD. Um, so yeah, I just don't get why he's not a Harmonia Humming instead of a Bloom because he's going to be very expensive because of just his design and clothing. And the fact that they're making the first and second ascensions, it's just going to cost a lot of money to get both of them. So definitely a way to circumvent this issue so you don't have to spend an arm and a leg on two versions of a character is to buy the clothing separately, which thank god they allow you to do. But the clothing sets that they come in ain't cheap either. So I'm looking at the Harmonial Bloom seasonal outfit set for Charlotte, a sort of eastery outfit. And that goes for 18k yen, which is I think about 130 USD. So yeah, ain't cheap, but it's definitely better than spending an extra 370 USD on another doll and their outfit. So honestly, I think it would just be best to buy one of the dolls and then just get the clothing set separately. Because again, Oberon's hair and crown design is not different at all from the first and second ascension, so I feel like you can get away with that at the end of the day. So 
Again, I don't think Harmonia Blooms aren't that bad, but I think at the end of the day, he should have been put as a Harmonia Humming. You know, he'll probably be like more expensive than a normal Harmonia Humming considering his design, but I think it's just like the look of it would look more appealing to a Harmonia Humming. Plus that freaking price tag, man, it's like absurd. So I'm interested overall just to see how he looks as a bloom and I may or may not consider picking him up at the end of the day as that kind of figure. So the last thing I do kind of want to talk about is that I have been drawing Oberon quite a bit as well in my free time. Um, Third Ascension mostly because I really like the design and surprisingly he's not too bad to draw. Um, at least from the front, when I get to the back with all those wings and, you know, different, yeah, insect wing details, that's gonna be a pain in the butt to do. Um, and I do, of course, still want to draw more of first and second ascension, but, um, I'm just very, I feel like very grateful towards this character and for, of course, Umino Chega who designed him for making him such, like, an appealing looking character design. Um, because, you know, he's gotten me out of my, like, art slump that I've been having. And yeah, they're like, you know, they're doodles, they're sketchy, they're kind of messy, but I'm at least, like, doing some sort of drawings that kind of, like, you know, make me happy for no matter how small they are. Um, digital art-wise, I do have this one, which I kind of want to revamp. I kind of have this idea where it's, like, his black sort of part is kind of, like, all against him. So it's kind of, like, half body in a way. And the other one, I kind of, you know drew inspiration mostly from the there's like a garage kit of him where he's sitting on this like massive like log and there's like a a, a blue pool of water underneath him um i have seen that garage kit by the way on Bai, but it's like 300 dollars, and i don't have the time or you know the money the extra money to go towards that um and also the materials um you know because there's a garage kit i'm not experienced with building those so there's that um but yeah so i kind of want to finish that digital piece soon you know just have like some you know completed artwork of him and in that piece i do kind of want to reference um the first and second ascensions in a way by having like a moth on the log and then a butterfly on his like fingertip um but yeah like there's just some ideas i've been having for that art piece based off that kind of garage kit um as well as of course the altar um figure of him the one thing I kind of struggle with, actually, Third Ascension, is that, um, you know, doing full body is how I want to draw his, like, clawed hands and feet. Um, I tried, like, basing it off of the altar um, figure's feet, which is very detailed and it feels very bony-like. Um, but I kind of wanted to simplify it for my style a little bit, um, not have it be, like, that complex, because, again, I have to draw it over and over again, and, and then, you know, I have to make sure, like, how's it going to look from this angle and such. Um, the hand is not too bad, but I feel like the feet are going to give me issues. Um, but yeah, so I, you know, of course I want to draw him more in the future. I just overall really like his design and just, you know, I'm, how interesting of a character he is and how he's just been, like, kind of getting me out of, like, my art slump a little bit. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to see more, like, Oberon stuff in the future that I kind of want to pick up. You know, some more than others. Again, I won't be collecting manga, not safe for work, <laughs> um, doujins of him either. And of course, the also big thing I want to see is for someone to adapt Avalon Le Fay or Lost Belt 6 from FGO, where Oberon is from, into an anime. Because I will lose my freaking mind once that drops. And yeah, I would like to see him just animated and his voice actor who did a fantastic job portraying him in game with his first and second ascension and how that kind of contrasts to his third ascension. Just be animated um i that would obviously be very exciting i don't know when or if that's ever going to happen but i would love to see it and yeah i'm just excited again for just like more oberon stuff for me to pick up in the future so yeah i'll be keeping an eye out on a bunch of things and of course i'll show them off in a video but for now i'm overall pretty satisfied with what i picked up obviously some stuff i've messed up completely on by not reading the description but it's you know so yeah, I'm not sure if I'll set up an Oberon shrine right now or I'll just collect items and make one in the future. Again, with my room and my space, it's just like, sometimes it's just not too viable. So we'll see how that goes. So yeah, that overall concludes this video. I'm interested to see if there's any other FGO or Fate fans out there and who is like your big favorite um, Fate character. I'm interested to see what um, other people like. Um, and yeah, I'm very glad that I kind of got into this series. It's been just a very enjoyable experience for me so far, and I'm looking forward to see where the series goes, um, in the future. But yes, if you did enjoy this video, um, 
And if you want to, of course, you can take the time to subscribe to my channel to see what other figure and merch related shenanigans I get into. And I thank you all for taking the time to watch this very long video and just me simping for this handsome character. And I hope you all have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or night wherever you are and take it easy. Goodbye.